Amo a mi Dabu. Amo a mi Dabu. Amo a mi Dabu. Amo a mi Dabu. Hi, everyone. I'm glad we're able to get together for a Sunday service. Most of you know me, uh, Bill Teague, a member of the temple. And I was humbled and honored when Genji Sensei asked me to go ahead and share a Dharma message for this Sunday. It occurs to me we've had a long road to hope. And how wonderful now that spring has indeed come. And the weather is lovely. In fact, nice and toasty, getting warm today. Beautiful flowers everywhere. And I hope, like me, looking forward to the Hanamatsuri service that will be two weeks from today. That will be a Zoom service, the best part of which is that we get to see each other at the beginning. And afterwards, we'll have breakout rooms where we can socialize with other Sangha members and Dharma friends. So something to really look forward to. The temple will be sending out an email to you a week or more before that service with uh, more information. And it will provide a link where if you can or are willing, you can go ahead and click on and sign up, and then you will be sent the Zoom link, or you can simply contact the temple directly by email or phone, and we'll send you the link. So hope to see you then. Please join me in Gasho and put your hands together. I'm going to be telling you a story about the old days in Japan, but we'll be saying it again at the end of the message. I'm only going to tell you the last line of that story. And that last line goes as follows. A man is speaking. If this happens, irrespective of which of us is right, the one who says the Nambutsu first is the winner. Namu Amidabutsu. Namu Amidabu. Namu Amidabu. So this message is meant to visit some basic Buddhist ideas and practices from the earliest days of Shakyamuni Buddha, as well as some insights from our Jodo Shinshu and current local tradition. In the process, I mean to show how the leaves of our practice at the treetop are connected to the deepest roots of our tradition. And let me tell you outright, I'm hoping that the message would be of interest to people just learning about Buddhism just as much as those of us who grew up in, or as in my case, spent most of our adult life in this Shin Buddhist tradition. Because essentially, from the Buddhist perspective, new and old hands in Buddhism are not all that different. I want to look at meditation, and especially Kenji Sensei's simple four-part meditation, which can allow us to grab five minutes of peace in the busyness of the day. Five minutes of peace. How often in our lives do we sometimes wish for just a few minutes of peace? And we might think if I just had five minutes of peace, I'd be okay. In several of his Dharma talks and also in the Buddhism 123 discussion class, Kenji Sensei has introduced a special kind of breathing meditation. It is especially useful in our challenging and even hectic lives. And I realized it should be better known. So I wanted to repeat it because it's ideal for experiencing five minutes of peace at least once a day. It's easy to do, it's informal, and you can take it with you wherever you go. Here's some theory as foundation. The Buddha taught four truths about life, which we call the Four Noble Truths, and meditation plays across them all. First, life includes suffering. Second, we experience suffering because things don't always go the way we want. Sometimes you can hear this translated as because of human passions or attachments. Third, we can transcend suffering. It's a positive message. So that is, there is a cure for these issues. And fourth, that cure is a spiritual path, which was first identified by the historical Buddha as the Eightfold Noble Path, eight dimensions of spirituality that the Buddha articulated in great detail this is considered the Buddha's first teaching because he spent 45 years expanding upon, supplementing, and discovering many more aspects of spirituality 
after that first sermon. Well, getting back to meditation, it relates the Four Noble Truths this way. First, meditation can temporarily remove us from our suffering in this world. Meditation can temporarily remove us from the daily grind of furthering our own selfish desires. Meditation allows us to deal with our lives and issues at one remove, providing perspective. Meditation is a welcome companion on the spiritual path. Look at it this way. You can see your life in retrospect and probably identify times when you acted rashly, uh, even cruelly to others, perhaps not even sure why. The Buddha would note that it is because we were not thinking pure and beautiful thoughts. And so we may be saying words that are not pure and beautiful and worse, maybe performing deeds that are not pure and beautiful. So think of meditation as a way to get out of the game, to remove ourselves just a bit from daily life. So we can rest and relax, see things in a different way in a less perhaps hectic way. Now in the popular mind, Buddhism is meditation. A lot of folks think that's all Buddhists do. And if you don't meditate, you're not a Buddhist. But please understand, uh, because sometimes we think the same way too, even though we should know better. Shakyamuni taught more deeply in the example of his own life, resolved to act, not simply meditate. In fact, he devoted himself to teaching for those 45 years. He meditated some, he taught more. He performed many other spiritual practices besides meditation. But the beauty of meditation is that it allows us to use the body to calm the mind, which works better than the mind trying to calm the mind on its own. This is because the body is not separate from the mind. Buddhism has always been a mind-body discipline. Meditation has the other, I'm sorry, meditation has the other advantages in that it is available to everyone. If you are not a Buddhist, you don't have to renounce your faith to meditate. It's portable. You can take it with us anywhere. All of these are virtues of Kenji Sensei's four-part meditation. So let's give it a try. Sit comfortably. Keep your spine upright, but drape your body like a coat on a chair back. You can relax your eyes, perhaps looking down in front of you, not worrying about seeing things and processing visual information. Some folks like to close their eyes. We will be breathing normally or maybe just a little more deeply than normal. So, exhale a little bit to get started. First, we inhale light. Second, we hold and appreciate that breath. Third, we exhale in gratitude. And fourth, relax. Those are the four parts of the meditation. And we simply do them again. So let's do so. First, inhale life. Second, hold and appreciate. Third, exhale in gratitude, or relax. Continue on your own pace. I'll go ahead though and just explain one more time. Inhale light, hold and appreciate, exhale in gratitude, relax. Inhale light, hold and appreciate, exhale in gratitude, Continue breathing in this way for a few minutes. Please continue meditating. But before we finish, I just wanted to share a personal observation. That meditation is not valuable just for how it grounds us, but because it does so in a very literal way, that is, it connects us to the earth. We inhale and exhale, 
echoes the waves breaking on the shore then retreating. It may suggest the warming sun, the first part of the day, the setting sun, and then the cool of night. Some of you may have visited the public park called Sycamore Canyon here in San Diego, a natural stand of sycamores. And if you go there in the morning, often you'll see the steam rising from the grass, from the ground. It sets there all morning and all afternoon, it's inhaling again. Decades ago, a man told Reverend Miyagi, a resident minister at the time, that this man would stand on the shore at dusk as part of his spiritual efforts. He would allow himself to feel the moment when what had been the onshore breezes begin to change to offshore breezes. That is the inhalation and exhalation of the land. So even if we're sitting in our rooms when we meditate, we are more in harmony with the earth than before. I'm not going to ring a bell to mark the end of the meditation. Let's go through one more cycle, then go ahead and relax. So while this is meditation, the sense that it focuses on the breath and allows us to go ahead by focusing on the breath to relax that part of our mind always worrying about getting ahead or calculating the best way to achieve our goals and prevents us from forming ill will or thinking strange thoughts to simply exist to simply be all good things in meditation. But Kenji Sensei has also infused that approach with the Shin emphasis on appreciation and gratitude for life within this physical, mental, mind, body exercise. So please keep this in mind because we all could use five minutes of peace. Look, there's a doctrinal speed bump, but uh, it's a speed bump we can avoid. So you may have heard people say that in Jodo Shinshu, we have no practice. And uh, this is true, but it's true technically. The folks are correct who say that in that we don't have a practice to achieve anything. Not really. The practice we have is to appreciate what we already have. If we appreciate what we have deeply, we have already begun to transform the limitations of our human nature. We may discover to our surprise that we can be a little more patient with ourselves and others. We are already on the Buddha's path, the Buddha path that's beneath our feet. My main tactic has been to place the four part meditation as part of the fourth noble truth. The Buddha taught us that the best way we have in dealing with the painful aspects of life is to follow a spiritual path. So please join me in Zasho. I can tell you now that the story I will recount comes from Gosei's Myokonin stories, translated by Hisao Inagaki. And these go way back. Gosei wrote his accounts back in the late 1700s. In one passage, he talks about a man named Abu Raya Sanzeamo, Saido village, in the Iga province. Sanzeamo used to tell his wife, you and I are both bombu, so there's no knowing when we'll start quarreling. If this happens, irrespective of which one of us is right, the one who says the Nambutsu first is the winner. Please join me. Reciting the numbers. Amo Amida, Amo Amida, Amo Amida. Thank you very much. <laughs> 